The FBI is responsible for more terrorism plots in the United States than any other organization. More than Al Qaeda, more than Al Shabaab, more than the Islamic State, more than all of them combined. This isn't likely how you think about the FBI. You probably think of FBI agents gunning down bad guys like John Dillinger or arresting corrupt politicians. After the 9/11 terrorist attacks, the FBI became less concerned with gangsters and crooked elected officials. The new target became terrorists, and the pursuit of terrorists has consumed the FBI. Every year, the bureau spends 3.3 billion dollars on domestic counterterrorism activities. Compare that to just 2.6 billion dollars combined for organized crime, financial fraud, public corruption. And all other types of traditional criminal activity. I've spent years poring through the case files of terrorism prosecutions in the United States, and I've come to the conclusion that the FBI is much better at creating terrorists than it is at catching terrorists. In the 14 years since 9/11, you can count about six real terrorist attacks in the United States. These include the Boston Marathon bombings in 2013, as well as failed attacks, such as the time a man named Faisal Shahzad tried to deliver a, a car bomb to Times Square. In those same 14 years, the bureau, however, has bragged about how it's foiled dozens of terrorism plots. In all, the FBI has arrested more than 175 people in aggressive undercover counterterrorism stings. These operations, which are usually led by an informant, provide the means and opportunity, and sometimes even the idea, for mentally ill and economically desperate people to become what we now term terrorists. After 9/11, the FBI was given an edict. Never again, never another attack on American soil. FBI agents were told to find terrorists before they strike. To do this, agents recruited a network of more than 15,000 informants nationwide, all looking for anyone who might be dangerous. An informant can earn $100,000 or more for every terrorism case they bring to the FBI. That's right, the FBI is paying mostly criminals and con men six figures to spy on communities in the United States, but mostly Muslim American communities. These informants nab people like Abu Khalid Abdul Latif and Wali Mujahid. Both are mentally ill. Abdul Latif had a history of huffing gasoline and attempting suicide. Mujahid had schizoaffective disorder. He had trouble distinguishing between reality and fantasy. In 2012, the FBI arrested these two men for conspiring to attack a military recruiting station outside Seattle with weapons provided, of course, by the FBI. The FBI's informant was Robert Childs. A convicted rapist and child molester who was paid $90,000 for his work on the case. This isn't an outlier. In 2009, an FBI informant who had fled Pakistan on murder charges led four men in a plot to bomb synagogues in the Bronx. The lead defendant was James Cromedy, a broke Walmart employee with a history of mental problems, and the informant had offered him $250,000 if he participated in that plot. There are many more examples. Today, The Intercept published my new story about a counterterrorism sting in Tampa involving Sammy Osmakosh, a young man who was living near Tampa, Florida. Osmakosh also had schizoaffective disorder. He too was broke, and he had no connections to international terrorist groups. Nonetheless, an FBI informant gave him a job, handed him money, introduced him to an undercover agent posing as a terrorist, and lured him in a plot to bomb an Irish bar. But here's what's interesting. The lead undercover agent—you can see him in this picture with his face blurred—would go back to the Tampa field office with his recording equipment on. Behind closed doors, FBI agents admitted that what they were doing was farcical. A federal judge doesn't want you to hear about these conversations. He sealed the transcripts and placed them under a protective order in an attempt to prevent someone like me from doing something like this. Behind closed doors, the lead agent, the squad supervisor, described their would-be terrorist as a retarded fool who didn't have a pot to piss in. They described his terrorist ambitions as wishy-washy, and a pipe dream scenario. But that didn't stop the FBI. They provided Sammy Osmakosh everything he needed. They gave him a car bomb. They gave him an AK-47. They helped him make a so-called martyrdom video, and they even gave him money for a taxi cab so he could get to where they wanted him to go. As they were working the sting, the squad supervisor tells his agents he wanted a Hollywood ending. And he got a Hollywood ending. When Sammy Osmakosh attempted to deliver what he thought was a car bomb, he was arrested, convicted, and sentenced to 40 years in prison. Sammy Osmakosh isn't alone. He's one of more than 175 so-called terrorists for whom the FBI has created Hollywood endings. 
U.S. government officials call this the war on terror. It's really just theater, a national security theater, with mentally ill men like Sami Osmakash, unwitting actors in a carefully choreographed production, brought to you by the FBI. Thank you. So, so those are some pretty strong accusations, pretty strong charges.、Um, how, do, how can you back this up? So my research began in 2010 when I received a grant from the investigative reporting program at UC Berkeley, and a research assistant and I put together a database of all terrorism prosecutions at the time in, during the first decade after 9/11, and、uh, we, we we used the court file to find out whether the defendants had any connections to. International terrorist groups, whether an informant was used, and whether the informant played the role of an agent provocateur by providing the means and opportunity. And we submitted that to the FBI, and we asked them to, you know, respond to our database if they had errors, if they believe there were any errors. We asked them to tell us what they were, and we go back and check. And they never challenged any of our findings.、Um, later, I used that data in a magazine article and, and later my book, and、um, on appearances with places like CBS and NPR. They were offered that opportunity again to say, you know, Trevor Aronson's findings are wrong, and and they've never they've never come forward and said these are the problems with with those findings. So the data, you know, has since been used by groups like Human Rights Watch on its recent report on these types of sting operations, and so far the FBI has never really responded that、um, you know to the charges that it's really not catching terrorists so much as it's catching mentally ill people that it can dress up as terrorists in these types of sting operations. So the Intercept is that new investigative journalism website that's co-founded by Glenn Greenwald.、Uh, tell us about your article and、um, and why there. Right. So the Intercept seemed to be the most logical place for this because my article is really leveraging the fact that a source had leaked to me transcripts of these private FBI conversations that a federal judge had sealed, based on the government's claim that their release would irreparably damage the. U.S. government's law enforcement strategy, and so a place like the Intercept was set up to protect journalists and publish their work when they're dealing with very sensitive matters like this. And so my story in the Intercept, which is published today, tells the story of how Sami Osmakash was set up in this FBI sting and goes into much greater detail. I mean, and in this talk, I could only really highlight the things that they said, such as calling him a retarded fool. But it was much more elaborate. They they went to great lengths to put money in Sami Osmakash's hands, which he then used to purchase weapons from the undercover agent. When he went to trial, the central piece of evidence was that he paid for these weapons. When in truth, these transcripts show how the FBI orchestrated someone who was essentially mentally ill and broke to get money to then pay for weapons that they could then charge him in a conspiracy for. So,、uh, one final question:、uh, Less than ten days ago, the FBI arrested some potential ISIS suspects in Brooklyn, saying that they might be headed to Syria. And、um, were those real, or are they examples of more of the same? Well, so far we only know what's come out in the court file, but they seem to suggest it's another example of the same. These type of、uh, sting operations have moved from kind of flavor to flavor. So initially it was Al Qaeda plots, and now the Islamic State is the current flavor. It, it was worth noting about that case is that the three men that were charged only began the plot to move or to go to Syria after the introduction of the FBI informant, and in fact the FBI informant had helped them with the travel documents that they needed. In kind of a comical turn in that particular case, one of the defendant's mother had found out that he was interested in going to Syria and had hid his passport. So it's unclear that even if he showed up at the airport, that he ever could have gone anywhere. And you know, so yes, there are people who might be interested in joining the Islamic State in the United States, and those are people that the United States government should be looking at to see if they're interested in violence here. In this particular case, given the evidence that's so far come out, it does suggest that. The FBI made it possible for these guys to move along in a plan to go to Syria when they were never close to that in the first place. Thanks a lot. That's、Great. amazing. Thank Thanks so much. Thank you.